We can speak to Fleur Hassan Nahum, who is the deputy mayor of Jerusalem. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on France 24. What do you make of this accusation that Israel is committing apartheid against the Palestinians? Well, it's, of course, absolutely preposterous, and it ignores the reality. It ignores the law. It ignores everything else. You have to understand, Human Rights Watch is an organization with zero credibility, certainly here. It has, doesn't even attempt to try and be balanced and look at both sides of the conflict. Now, when you have an organization that doesn't even attempt to be balanced, why would anybody take them seriously? They've spent the last 20 to 30 years trying to stick this label on Israel apartheid. And that actually is kind of a, a cultural appropriation of the suffering of many South African people who really lived in an apartheid state. And to try and put this label on Israel is at best lazy and at worst, of course, slander. We have a number of things that we can say. We can talk about the Palestinian territories as, as an autonomous territory. They completely ignore that. We went through Oslo agreements, which were supposed to be the agreements pre-creating uh, a state for the Palestinians. The Palestinians started taking authority for themselves in the Palestinian Authority. Now, these are areas that Israel does not rule. Why do they keep lying and insisting that somehow we repress an area which is not even under our uh, jurisdiction or authority? So that's the first thing. Secondly, you have to understand that uh, this organization is completely obsessed with the fact that Israel is a Jewish state and everything else are demographic arguments. They don't accept the Jewish state of Israel. So how can I have a discussion with people who don't accept my existence? OK, but it's, not just, it's not just Human Rights Watch, though, is it? Because the Israeli civil society group, uh, Beit Salem, and you can probably pronounce that better than I can, uh, made a similar accusation. And today uh, that group welcomed the Human Rights uh, Watch report. They said it was essential reading. So those accusations don't just seem to be coming from external bodies with what might be described as an anti-Israel agenda. Well, again, these internal bodies have to you always follow the money, see who's funding them, see who's donating to them, and you'll understand exactly why their agenda is what it is. We completely reject. Again, we're not saying we're perfect, but where are the both sides of the argument? Where is the attempt, even the attempt to be balanced? Where is the attempt for one second to understand Israel's security need, to understand the terrorism that comes within mainland Israel from some of these territories? Where is the attempt to explain why, after leaving Gaza, leaving what, you know, they pronounce as an occupation, we're still getting rockets fired at southern Israel? And the bottom line is, and that's what these groups, you know, they, they can't say it, but ultimately what they're pointing to the fact is that they don't accept the legitimacy of Israel as a Jewish state. The but rest uh, is but just Israel's detail. own uh, Arab citizens frequently complain, and we hear them uh, complaining, <laughs> and we see videos posted online uh, where they lament uh, systemic uh, discrimination against them. Are you saying that those complaints are without any foundation whatsoever? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that. Every country has its problems. Every country has its discriminations. I myself spend my day fighting these types of discriminations here in Jerusalem. But it doesn't, ma doesn't mean by far law, the law in this country applies to everybody. Our protection of minorities is in our constitution. We're the only country in the Middle East where Arabs can vote. And so to have these kind of you know, accusations completely baseless from reality, of course we have our problems. The Ethiopian Jewish community also have their problems with discrimination. But it doesn't mean that the whole country is an apartheid state just because we have our discrimination problems. That would make every European state and every American state a, a country of apartheid. Is that what we're saying? We're a modern country with law and order. And I, I mean, I, I want to quote you, even the founder of Human Rights Watch, whose name is Robert Bernstein, in the New York Times said that Human Rights Watch has been issuing reports on the Arab-Israeli conflict that are helping those who wish to turn Israel into a pariah state. This is their motivation, and this report is not worth the paper it's written on. But actually, uh, when I haven't read all 213 pages of the report, but the extracts that I've read, uh, you know, they call not for a sweeping boycott of Israel, uh, but instead spe specific individuals to be targeted with sanctions, uh, travel bans, asset freezes. Are there, in, in your opinion, that's, that's no boycotts. individuals? That's, bo that's BDS. That's BDS. But are there no boycotts, individuals that, uh, that should be... And sanctions. Mm. You're saying there are no individuals that uh, uh, should face uh, su such uh, sanctions uh, for, for, for the treatment of, of Palestinian people? 
what are we talking about? The Israeli companies that employ Palestinian people because the Palestinian Authority has never bothered to develop an economy that their own people can go and can make a living with. Those people we should sanction? The people giving people a living? Who should we sanction? We are, we are a country of law and order. The people who are racist and who commit a crime are in jail in my country, whether they are Jewish or Arab. And that's all you need to know. A high court is amongst the highest ethical courts in the entire world. It has made many, many decisions that have favored many Palestinian organizations. So we have nothing to be ashamed of. The Human Rights Watch should be ashamed of making an anti-Semitic report because it targets the only Jewish state that exists around the world. It's a shame they don't put the focus on Assad in Syria killed half a million of people. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there because we're out of time. But thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on that report uh, published uh, by Human Rights Watch. Thank you to Fleur Hassan Nahum, the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem. Thanks for speaking.